Hello, this is Kerry Schutz with MathWorks, and we're back with another installment uh, with Mixed Signal Block Set and Modeling PLLs. This is our fourth uh, video in this series, and so that means in this video, uh, we're going to concentrate on logging signals in the PLL simulation, doing some post-processing on that log data, and also doing some spectrum analysis. So where we left off in the previous video was, was more on an impairment modeling. We had focused on uh, uh, looking under the hood at how we model the charge pump and how we model impairments in the charge pump. And we'd also created a custom uh, impairment, uh, uh, a delay asymmetry in the phase frequency detector. All right, so again, in this video, we're gonna concentrate on logging and analysis. Um, so let's get started. Now I'm gonna concentrate in this uh, version on the, uh, let's say on the uh, loop filter output. Um, we'll start by logging it. So let's say this, the, spec, the scope here is nice when we just wanna view the signal uh, in um, live, in situ, in our simulate model, uh, but sometime you may wanna do some other types of visualization or comparisons for other reasons. So the first thing I wanna introduce is the simulate data inspector for that purpose. So the first thing I, I'm gonna do is right click on the signal of interest and that means the signal here and I'm gonna say log. Okay, so it puts a little bluish logging signal. There looks like a Wi-Fi signal, a dot with a couple emanating like pond waves from it. And that says we are logging that signal. And we're logging a signal called LF out, if it, you know, loop filter output. Um, you can name any of your signals in your model, like you can say CP out as an example, or uh, one at lower case, um, CP underscore out, if you, you know, whatever you wanted to call these signals. Sometimes that can be very, very handy. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna run this model again. When I run this time, it's gonna log the data to the MATLAB workspace. So I'm logging, I'm running, I'm, and I'm logging as I go. See the progress indicator at the bottom, and it's finished running, and I can do two things now. I can go to MATLAB and start and grab the data and look at it, or if I just want it immediately, I can double click on the Wi-Fi signal itself call up the simulate data inspector and we'll see uh, a waveform. In fact, it's the latest waveform is this one. And I've got some legacy waveforms here, which I don't care about right now. So I'm gonna delete those. Yes, I wanna delete those. And I'm left with the one waveform that I just ran with, uh, run number eight, which is now really essentially run one because, well, I deleted my archives. Now we can do all the normal visualization things here. We can, you know, zoom in, and um, zoom out. We can configure our layout if we wanted um, a different format of plot. If we had multiple plots we wanted to put at the same time, we could arrange um, how we wanted uh, the plots to be and maybe a row column arrangement like four, four by two or three by three. Um, all different customizations you can make here in the Simulate Data Inspector. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is use it for a very common purpose. So I'm gonna use it for comparison from run to run. So what I'm gonna do is change, um, let's say this to 50 and run again. And now I've got two runs. I'll bring in the past run and we'll compare. And you notice we've got um, the current run up here, run nine and the previous run, I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the a previous run a different color so we can even more easily see it. And now we got a red run and a green run. And you notice the green run takes longer to settle than does the red run. We can do another one if we want to. Let's just do one more for fun. Let's just say it was the free running frequency was two rather than 1.5. And the voltage sensitivity was 100, whatever. And let's run it again. All right, and now we've got old runs and we can pull them all in. And now we've seen one, two, three. I'll call, I'll make this one a different color yet. We'll make that blue. And we've got all our runs. We've got our current run blue against our uh, previous two runs in the different colors you see here. Now, of course, one thing you probably want to do is every time you ran these, it, is you probably want to 
customize the names and you might say something like, um, you know, KBCO, whatever, underscore 56 or something. You could put some kind of indicator of what the parameters were on that run in the name there. Uh, so always a good idea to label them so you know what each one actually meant. All right, so that's certainly one thing you can do. You can compare waveforms, and there's all sorts of extra things that we won't get in today with Simulink Data Inspector that are possible. Okay, so there's Simulink Data Inspector, but also the data that we're viewing in Data Inspector is also available in the MATLAB workspace. So if we go to the MATLAB workspace, we'll see a variable called out, and we can grab that data and do all sorts of analysis or visualization on it. So for instance, if we just type out, you will see that it is a simulation output variable. And the key variables of interest within this uh, data structure or simulation.output structure are logs out and t out. t out is pretty obvious. That's the time steps the simulate model took. And logs out is contains the data. So first of all, let's grab the data. Uh, that would be out.logs out. And let's just look at that. We label, we, we uh, logs LF out, our loop filter output. So the way you access that is to index it as a Celeray element number, whatever this is. If you had two signals, you could index into it accordingly, one, two, three. We just have one, so I'll say one dot values dot data. And that will be our LF loop filter output. And then finally for time, that is equal to same thing. I can just up there all actually. That time and say T. Now it just so happens if you look at LFO now, it is a three dimensional quantity. And that'll be a little problem when we're plotting. So we just really, one of the dimensions is redundant. So I'm going to squeeze it down to two dimensions and say LFO is equal to squeeze LFO. And now I'm going to plot it. I'll say figure plot T comma LFO comma, uh, not comma, grid on. And that should plot it out. And sure enough, we see our latest run there. We can zoom in. Of course, we can annotate this and do all the normal things we would do to customize our visualizations. Okay, so that's two things. One, you can log the data using the uh, logging symbol, right click and log. Um, you can view it in the simulate data inspector and compare with previous runs, archived runs. And you can grab the data in the MATLAB workspace out of the data structure, a simulation output, and do a custom uh, post-processing there as well. The final thing I wanna point out now is uh, doing how to do spectrum analysis on a particular signal in your model. So I'm gonna choose just because it's probably the signal most people care about, it's the PLL output. So I just say, I wanna look at the spectrum of that signal, how could you do it? Well, certainly you could log it, do an FFT in MATLAB, do some manipulations, look at the auto spectrum, power spectrum, power spectrum density. Uh, but I wanna do something where I don't have to really write any code. I wanna use simulate blocks. So I am going to do a few things. One is I'm gonna pull in a spectrum analyzer Let's see here. And I'll just pull that one in. Uh, but I can't just run, I can't uh, meaningfully just run that in there because this is uh, a variable step signal in general. And Simulink here, and you notice the solver here says variable step discrete. So spectrum analyst, spectrum analyst uh, analysis in general and FFT based analysis needs equally spaced time data. So I need to do some sampling. So one way to get the sample rate and set it to something fixed is use a zero order whole block. And I know my uh, sample, my uh, output frequency here is 2.1 uh, gigahertz. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, the free running frequency is two, but we make some adjustments with the VCO and the PLL make it 2.1. So I'm going to make it a multiple of that rate. I'm gonna say it's just eight times 2.1 E9. So we're oversampling that, that uh, square wave. Uh, well, it's actually a square wave, but um, it's going to have multiple harmonics. So it's infinite in bandwidth. But if it were a sine wave, it, we'd be oversampling by eight, the, the carrier, the, the, the first harmonic. 
And then we've got, we want to do some alias filtering, let's say in general, we don't want to look at an infinite bandwidth signal. Um, so let's go ahead and put in an analog filter. Put that there. Let's connect that up. So let's go there. Whoops. Delete that extra line. And let's change it from a Butterworth filter to something with a little better uh, frequency characteristics, frequency response characteristics. I'll go to a low pass, eighth order uh, elliptic filter with a passband edge of, let's say, 2.4 E9. Again, I'm trying to allow the first harmonic through, attenuate the higher harmonics, the third and fifth harmonic of our output square wave. Passband ripple, I'll say one, maybe 100 dB of stop band attenuation, not 1,000. Say OK. And now let's run this and see if I get a good spectrum at 2.1 gigahertz. Um, although I will point out that by default, the spectrum analyzer is, uh, is, in, is set up to use filter banks. And filter banks are great for uh, high resolution analysis. However, if you want speed, um, then actually the um, Welch's method is better in terms of the transient response. So I'm going to go with the... Um, Welch's method for reasons of speed in terms of transit response. I'm going to set up a thousand point FFT. Handing window is fine. Uh, I'm going to use dB watts. I'm going to use running averaging. I'm not going to do any averaging right now, just the one. Uh, and single sided spectrum, I got a real signal, so no need to look at two sides. And let's run that. This gives me the fastest response. I don't have to worry about averaging how long it takes to do that. So let's just see what happens. Now, we are in the transient response initially of the DLL. So you see a transient response also in the spectrum. So, but when it settles down though, we get a nice response with 200 dB of dynamic range or so. So that's, you know, obviously in ideal world here. Uh, I don't really have many impairments enabled to speak of in the PLL. And you see our uh, first harm, our third harmonic is down over 100 dB as expected. Now let's say we wanted to do something a little different. I'm going to make our PLL a little smaller now so we can see both. Auto fit that. And now let's go into the VCO and enable some phase noise. Uh, let me, I'll stop the model, allow you to get a glance. We can even do a screen capture here in case we forget. I'll capture that. We can always pull that back on later. Uh, just use snipping tool to capture that spectrum. All right, so let's go ahead and add some phase noise. Impairment, add phase noise. Okay, let's say okay. We're gonna add phase noise at these levels, at these offsets with, from the carrier. So let's do that. And let's run it again and take a mental snapshot of that. Actually, you don't have to. I took a physical snapshot of it over here. And let's see what happens. And it's settling down a little bit and still in the transient response. But you'll see that it does look different. Um, it's, it's got a little more width now to the uh, 2.1 gigahertz uh, spectrum. Now, this spreading, we have that characteristic phase noise spreading of the carrier due to the phase noise. It's also spreading the harmonic as well a little bit. Um, so you can see the spectrum jumping around more and more spreading due to that um, impairment in the system. Okay, I'm going to hit stop there. All right, so that's really all I want to cover in this video. Uh, we're going to get into more impairment modeling, more phase noise uh, details in uh, subsequent videos, but I just want to uh, point out ways to log signals, way to post process them in MATLAB, and ways to do quick uh, spectrum analysis on any signal in your model using this very handy spectrum analyzer. Thank you for tuning in.